Hey everybody, welcome to another episode. I want to share with you a recent article that uh, I found online that references uh, a lot of the legal changes that are happening with independent contractors in the gig economy and the on-demand workforce. Uh, this article came from the Boston Globe in late April and it's entitled New Rules for a New Economy and it goes into the recent legal battle in the gig economy between Uber and some plaintiff's attorneys that were looking to classify Uber drivers not as freelancers but rather as employees of Uber. So you'll see a lot of talk in this particular article, article about independent contractors and that um, push to classify drivers as employees. Now the key uh, part of this particular um, legal battle was that it was settled out of court. So it was not taken to a jury trial, which would have been probably long and drawn out. And of course, Uber has a ton of resources, but then again, uh, plaintiff attorneys as they get together in labor also have tons of resources too. So it would have been interesting uh, to find out which way this went. However, it was settled. Uh, so Uber is going to be forced to pay a hundred million dollars, uh, but will be able to continue to classify its workforce as freelance or gig based and not employee based. And it seems like from the article, and we'll probably see more of this in the coming months, that we're going to see a new hybrid type of worker classification that has the flexibility of freelance, but some of the stability and benefits of an internal in the US W-2 employee. So a lot of really interesting things happening here with this case. So uh, many companies, and I mean many, but, but when I mean many is I mean dozens or even hundreds of new on-demand companies are leveraging in the independent contractor status. As many of you know, I have a deep background in payrolling uh, and, and uh, providing W-2s to temporary and flexible labor. And quite often there's too much control issued over the freelance workforce and um, these people cross the line and cross over into W-2 status, in my opinion. I'm not certain if Uber um, is that mold or not, but certainly this case was settled. They're going to pay this $100 million and they believe to some degree that they um, are utilizing some employer tactics. So just to continue down the article, many people are seeing this at $100 million as a small price to pay for Uber and it probably is. Uh, you'll see here in this line uh, right above this highlight that Uber is valued at 62 billion. So 100 million is still a lot of money regardless, but um, it's not as significant to a, to a company that has a much smaller value than Uber that has 62 billion dollars. Now Uber has, at least they claim to have, 450,000 drivers using its app every month. That's a significant, incredible size workforce for such a small company. And just in Boston alone, there's 20,000 drivers. So it's a significant case that doesn't just affect a small group of drivers, but quite a few people in the industry. Now, many companies chimed in in this Boston Globe article and also some other pundits and experts, and then they realized that this could become an expensive game, quote unquote, as they write here, for new on-demand gig type companies. And it's true. A lot of these companies do seem to cross over into the W-2 uh, universe and uh, the employer universe, if you will, if you're, if you're not from the U.S. And uh, it could get dangerous for sure. So Lyft, Uber's main competitor, also uh, agreed to uh, settle out of court in January. So this is something that's pervasive. And you're seeing a lot of different spin-offs of this type of driving business model that are certainly going to be affected as well. As they transition to this more hybrid employer freelance workspace, their costs are going to go up. So not that Uber is a bargain, uh, but uh, certainly we're going to see that co smaller companies that are in the same space, their costs are going to go up. And a lot of reason that a lot of the reason that people are leveraging this freelance workforce is because it's less expensive, not just for driving, but also for online graphic design or programming or what or other types of marketing. And there's a myriad of things that people are using this workforce for now. So. Uh, one, one startup executive, Marcella Sapone, in the article said it will likely, decision will likely increase their costs by 20 to 30 percent, which is about the range of what the burden is, burden being the temporary staffing technical term for payroll taxes, insurance, funding, other costs to process payroll and cut checks. 
Um, it's about the right burden, 20 to 30 percent, depending upon the state you're in, the workers' comp code, and other factors. And it'll also make startups less flexible to grow quickly. So this is going to this is going to have a definite impact on this on-demand economy. Uh, and I'm seeing a lot of companies enter the space who are super smart people, but really not experienced in the labor side. And I think that uh, companies need to not only move fast and get a high valuation and, and have a proof of concept and scale and have their model work, but they need to understand the labor law around this or else they could be running 80 miles an hour at a brick wall. So this company also said, this executive also said on the plus side, it gives her company the ability to train without having to worry about uh, whether they're a freelancer or their employee, because training is a big part of the test and there's no clear uh, test at this point uh, as to whether somebody's a freelancer or a um, uh, internal employee. A lot of it is who discipline terminates and controls the worker, and we won't get into that on this blog post. So some observers uh, say that the Uber settlement could help establish a new model, which we've mentioned uh, in this particular vlog so far, for frontline labor, which, which kind of combines non-employee workers who have more protections and their rights with traditional independent contractor flexibility. And uh, as they write kind of in the last paragraph here in this Boston Globe article, you either get the flexibility you want in today's day and age in this workforce or you get the benefits. So a lot of important things in this article. Thought I would mention it. Uh, appreciate you following along. Well, obviously, we'll keep monitoring how this fight and this particular um, the classification for workers is all shaping up in the coming months and years. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.